What I'm sharing with you today is, um, is an extraction of findings from the Generation X survey, which we run annually. It's kind of hopefully also a teaser for the 26, 2016 results, which come out literally next Friday, the 10th of June. Um, but I think the, the 2015 results are definitely fresh enough to still be relevant and interesting. And as Derek said, they were bound up with, with an exercise we did with Yellowwood last year into a, a white paper on youth, this one here, which is available online at ywood.co.za, which is, <coughs> I think, one of the nicest pieces. We obviously access lots of the research that's available, both kind of textual and qualitative, and much more deep and quantitative uh, in South Africa and on the continent on youth, and it's really one of the nicest um, praises of what's going on in the youth space that's available. So get a read if you can, and it's free and easy to do so. <coughs> then just this whole dilemma of millennials, I mean, I think it gets hell of a confusing, what is Generation Y, what is Generation Z, what is ANC Youth League Youth? What is school going youth? Um, so, where are we speaking about millennials? Generally, we're speaking about everybody um, also uh, kind of um, synonymistically Generation Y. So, they're pretty much from early teens up to who are now 35. So, I'll be speaking to you a little bit about Gen Ys and Gen Zs. So, kids, teens, and young adults. In, in the current South African landscape. And for us, those are those ages there. Really small kids, um, teens who are high school going generally, secondary schoolers, 13 to 18, and then of course young adults. And young adults for us goes up into their, well into their 20s, but on screen here it's up to age 23 because when we're presenting Generation Next findings, the study polls youth ages eight to 23. So we can only start at eight because they're written questionnaires, um, and even the eight-year-olds worryingly, increasingly battle with that. Um, and then we we in, in varsities and communities, so we look at lots of students, final year students, uh, and then some first-time jobbers. So that's the age group we're speaking about. When Tully speaks just now, and when Anthony speaks, they'll be, sleep, be speaking slightly more broadly up into Generation Y and older millennials right into their late 20s. So that's just the goalpost stuff. Overall, uh, why do they matter? And whenever we challenge people on this, they go, well, they matter because you're a youth marketing company. Um, so obviously they matter to us, but we live on the youngest place in the world called Africa. So purely in terms of um, quantity, there's a huge number of young people in South Africa and in Africa. And I mean, if you live in this context as we do, you start thinking all populations are young, or certainly emerging market populations are young. It's not the case. It's a huge problem for China, for instance. Um, we heard a Clem Sunter, well, a business breakfast this morning at which Clem Sunter spoke, and he's, one of his flags is the gray flag, which is the fact that a huge pressure point on the world economy is aging populations, including China, who had a one-child policy and have now extended to two-child. But there's a huge problem with... Um, with aging population, and that dwarfs in comparison to Japan, whose population, and this, this cutoff here for us, is ages 25 and younger. Um, so more of the South African population is young than old, i.e. us, the occupants of the room. <laughs> but, I mean, in Japan, that percentage is 18%. All the rest are fogies. And there's hu he literally... The percentage of over 60-year-olds are higher than the percentage of 25 and under. So there's stacks of them. I mean, in countries like Uganda, 70% of the population are 25 and under. But quantity doesn't necessarily uh, mean that they're important consumers in a, a commercial perspective. And as HDI is a youth marketing company, we turned 20 in November. And for a long time, at least the first 10 years, when we met with clients, it wasn't about convincing them about HDI as a research or marketing or activation service provider, it was just convincing them of the viability of youth as a customer base. And so we'll also look at a bit about why they're viable and important customers rather than just plentiful customers. So that's the breakdown in population. I mean, if we're speaking about 25 and under, we're speaking about 20, close to 27 million South Africans. And if we're speaking about 35 and under, we're speaking about far and away uh, the bulk of the South African population.